and I see Bianca just mentioned it, Jada is a predator. Like, if no, no, don't yeah. have a face, Tiff. If we're gonna like yeah. if this is a dude, yeah, who who was with somebody right now when they had some mental health issues and they did this, we'd be dragging him all over Twitter. This is not very far from what R. Kelly did with those 20-year-old women. If I mean it's very far because she didn't kidnap him or trap him, actually. But as far as like the age appropriateness, <laughs> it's not that far. Like, so we gotta be honest about that. I love Jada as much as anybody else, and she's as fine as she wanna be. But that this is type nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, Stanley, you brought up a really good point. I agree. Tiffany, is there a double standard between when older men date younger women who are 20 or 30 years older? We see it all the time. In fact, it's it's applauded in Hollywood and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um is that is there a double standard here because Jada was dating someone who was much younger than her? I'm not gonna debate you know, whether it's a double standard or not. Clearly oh. it's a double standard. Like, so Stanley, I'm with you. I think I just had a pause of just like labeling her a predator because I guess the way she, her narrative on her own platform, how she, you know, characterized their um, their relationship. I don't think she went in there with the intentions of getting involved or in an entanglement with mm -hmm. all So that is actually what happened. So, you know, she has to be called to the carpet or to her, you know, nice little circle table. So I do agree that there is definitely a double standard. And if it was anyone else, I think just in the news recently, Johnny Depp had a similar situation where he's dating divorce proceedings with a much younger uh, woman who's, I think, uh, divorcing his wife. And she's like 24 and he's like well into his 50s. So mm -hmm. of course it's nasty, it's disgusting. It's unfortunate because I feel like as a black woman and a lot of people like the Smiths and Jada. So it was kind of like, Ugh, it's causing you to like reevaluate how you look at these sort of circumstances. But... I just kind of feel like I just think it's damn. Why, Jada? <laughs> why? Well, let, let me let me say something before we get to you, Naledi. First mm -hmm. of all, I wasn't that mad. I think it's Will's fault. You Whoa, gonna let this what? fine? First of all, August Alcina, he is a thirst trap. Okay, it's a girl. It's a girl. You I'm gonna not. let him in your home? If it wasn't Jada, he would have went after Willow. Like I'm saying, somebody in there was gonna oh. get got. Okay, no, I'm, 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 oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. Wait, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. And I want to just point out how wild problematic that is. Because if we said it about a man, yo, we all be going crazy. Be going crazy. crazy. No, be no, no. First of all, I would not bring a a, a woman who was 27, 20 something years my younger in my home for me and my husband to help her. First, and she's extremely attractive and all the other stuff. I wouldn't have did that anyway. Okay, Naledi, what do you think? Bianca says, bring Barack into my house so she can help him heal. This oh. will be Hill in Bianca's house if, if Obama gets in there. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. Like, we let's just be realistic. Um, Naledi, what do you feel? Do you feel that Jada was preying on August in any way? Or was she vulnerable and ended up in an entanglement? It happens. No, I that's saw it. a whole lot going on in that interview. Like, to me, that whole relationship is very toxic. Like, besides the surface of it, that you could just tell how toxic that relation is. Will looked like he was on the verge of tears and snapping her neck all at the same time. Like, it was very cringy watching that interview. Like, they said that whole thing, like, bad marriage for life. And they were like... <laughs> They were, like, laughing through their tears through, truly through this whole interview. So, like, for me, I'm trying to figure out what's really going on behind the scenes that we don't know. Like, I sense abuse somewhere. It could be on Jada. It could be on Will. Like, I definitely sense some type of abuse because to feel like for the overall conversation to be about, like, we're not leaving each other at the end of the day. We're just going to, like, do this till we die, this partnership that we're going to call it that's toxic as hell. Like, I don't know what that's about, what pact they decided to create that through all of this, now that it's out for all of us to see. Because for years, we've always heard about this so-called open relationship, but yeah. it's clearly not an open relationship. Somebody yeah. got hurt. So like, um, as far as Jada specifically though, she definitely preyed on the fact that August Alcina was super vulnerable. Like he had how many deaths in his family? Like, I, I agree with Stanley. If it was the other way around, we would be like, why are you taking this poor broken little girl and using her to your advantage to where August said he literally lost he almost like he lost it when they broke up like I don't know if you guys heard the August um full August interview but he spoke also how that relationship really really broke him to his core so 
there's definitely <laughs> I don't agree with what Jada did I don't even agree with their marriage I think they just need to split up and call it a day because that weird partnership that they have is just and they need to end it before somebody gets hurt well thank you the hold on Stanley thank you Naledi you know just to react one of one of the telling points I think in that interview that really caught me was when she was like I just want to feel good like he made me feel good. I was like, yeah. Jada. But anyway, and then also another thing she um, she admitted was that she that journey and that entanglement helped her to realize how emotionally insecure and immature she was. So she has said that she has since grown and healed. Stanley, I know we're getting a lot of comments on Facebook, and I want to get your reaction. Yeah. So um, real quick, I want to push back on one thing the lady said. Yeah. Um. Yo, marriage is hard. Relationships are hard. If you're in a real relationship and, like, you're serious about that person, y'all going to go through some things straight up. I'm not saying that this is okay, but, like, you may be in a situation where your partner cheats. And should that be the end of the relationship? Not necessarily, in my opinion. And But that's what it means when you say till death do us part. Like, it's a commitment to pushing through those things. So I'm not mad at them about that. And I want to say that because, like, I think social now, media. Now, I agree, is, but look at, I don't know, like, if you were able to look at Will's face, he's not over it. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, he's not. <laughs> he's not over it. So, to yeah. me, if you prolong a situation like that and you guys never even took the time to heal, like, Jada's just chilling with her kick, feet kicked back. Like, and then they have that whole back and forth about, yeah, I'm going to get you back. Yeah, I'm going to get, well, you got me back already. We don't know what's going on in relationship. This doesn't sound mm -hmm. like something that happened for the first time. You're right, but real quick, <laughs> I got some comments. Amy Jones says he was in the throes of addiction. Punani don't heal that. She definitely preyed on him. Yes. He says, Will has his own skeletons. The reason he was passionate. That's Exactly. Antoinette Murray says, dating with an age difference is not nasty. She sought August out knowing that he was in a vulnerable mental state. She prides herself on heal on quote unquote healing men. She's a predator. First of all, thank you everybody who left comments. Please continue to leave comments. We'll get to as many of them as possible. Same thing on um on Zoom. If you're leaving comments on Zoom, we would definitely get to you as quick as we can. But yeah, I, I'm not mad at them for trying to work things out. If, if you're really committed to love, if you're really committed to a person, you're not always going to like the person that you're with. It's not always going to be sweet. And you got to swallow your pride. You got to work through some things. So I get that. I don't get her healing him. I'm August. And yeah, Will is obviously not over that. And there might be a case that Will just found out about that. Um, or just like, let me be trash for a second, Selena. It's like, Will could be tight because he knew she was doing her thing. She knows he's doing his thing, but he kept his thing tight and she didn't. That's what I think the issue was. <laughs> it's like, Go ahead, Tiffany. Right. Oh. I think Blue is mad at the publicity of it because he said, like, now Black Twitter thinks this is their their business. And I don't necessarily think that he had they had to respond, but because of the nature of her show and calling people to the carpet or to her table, she has to obviously call herself to the table. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's what, like, the frustration to me on his face. I think it might be still some hurt there. But I think he was just annoyed that they have to be so public about their damn business. It's like, Jada, you out here being messy where, you know, I'm keeping my entanglements, you know, entangled and quiet. <laughs> that, I would agree. I, I, honestly, I was, I was somewhat surprised that they even had this red table talk because it is none of our business. Jada and Will Smith do not owe us anything. And I feel like we have this misconception about celebrities because we support them and love them and idolize them so much that they owe us their privacy. No, they do not. Like, they didn't have to come out and, and clarify, you know, but they decided to do it. Well, let me tell you why they had to do it. Because, like, if I'm going to be 100% honest, August Alcina, I don't care what he went through, he doesn't know how to play his position. <laughs> not for real. I'm sorry. Like... I thought side, side piece is one of the best roles for a single person. You get all of the perks, none of the drama. And the only thing you have to do is shut up and do what you got to do. And everybody makes it clear from the jump, like, this is what your role, this is how you are, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to go any further. And if you get caught up and they pull back, you got to accept the fact that you got caught up and chalk it up to the game. He didn't know his place. It's the same thing. You're going to be a side piece. Be solid. I bet you all the Will side pieces got promotions because they held it down. Ten toes down. He wasn't a side piece, though. They were in a relationship. No, 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 no. He was a side piece. She was never leaving him for her husband. And all that's what people don't understand. She was it's like, but, that's, like, but, that's, but that's why we're saying Jada prayed on him because, in his opinion, he was in a relationship, in a real one at that. 
they shared hearts. So you can't convince him he was, and with the permission, quote unquote, of Wu. So that man was under the impression that he was with Jada. Listen, Memphis Bleak had a diss track towards, towards, um, towards Nas a couple of years ago. I'm not gonna spit the lyrics. I'm gonna tell you the name of the song, and it's for all the side pieces out there. Play your position. <laughs> um. All right. Well, final words on that. I honestly, I'll just pray for their healing for the whole Smith family. But honestly, my yeah. concern is really for August Alcina. Um. Right. He has. I, I actually did some more research in him. He has expressed very grave and serious, you know, mental and physical health conditions. He is, it doesn't seem like he's been in a very healthy state. It seems like he's trying to get there now. We see the backlash that happened against Kiki Palmer, which I just think is misguided and misdirected anger. So I think August needs to continue to heal without the Smiths. <laughs> and, and I think he, you know, he needs therapy and whatever else because he does have a lot of issues. Um, okay, Tina, I have to read this comment or else I'll okay. be okay. Marilyn said that August was cloud chasing and that he was just mad because this affair happened four years ago. He put out a song, nobody cared about it, and he was cloud chasing. And I agree. Like, he was, come on. He was being a messy Betty. And then he blacked on Kiki Palmer. I, I wouldn't <laughs> I say that he was cloud chasing. He called Jada the love of his life. And so? and I don't think, I think he did. A, I, felt, I think he felt in love for her. Mess up her marriage. Well, he didn't see, like Naledi said, in his mind, and through his lens, they were together and there was hope and potential for them to have a public and deeper relationship, more of a meaningful relationship. And if you right. follow the saga, it sounds like he broke it off with her because mm -hmm. she was not willing to give him more. Yet right. still his heart was broken. Let me tell you a quick story about Frederick Douglass, how Frederick Douglass was in this house with his wife and had a whole other white woman there and was promising her that he was gonna make her number one when his wife died. This side chick held it down. Well, Frederick Douglass is trash for this. This side chick held it down for like 30 years. Frederick Douglass' wife died. Frederick Douglass then married a younger white woman. The side chick killed herself and left all her money to him. That's how you hold it down as a side chick. You see? Um, That's the kind of world to be looking for. All right. For. We, we, we're going to move after that problematic statement. <laughs> we're going to move it along.